Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Restoring the Mosaic. I'm Dr. Ann Gillies. I have a really special guest with me today, Mohamed Mora, and he is a Calgarian, Canadian, uh, from Syria originally, right? No, Lebanon. Lebanon. Oh, dear. I've already messed up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyway, we were talking about Syria earlier. And anyways, um, I just really want to welcome him today. And we're going to talk about the One Million March for Children that's coming up September 20th, all across Canada, primarily in Ottawa is going to be a huge focus, but there are groups just popping up all across this nation. And it's very exciting to see. So let's talk. Well, then, uh, what, what got you into this fight? Like uh, any Canadian fathers out there who care about his family, cares about his kids, uh, he should step into this fight and stand with us shoulder to shoulder, back to back, to protect the future of this country, which is its kids. It's the kids of this country. So we, we decided to protest when uh, that kid in Edmonton got bullied by his teacher to tell him if you miss a day or not participate in the Pride Month or whatever the reason is. She humiliated the kid in front of his friend. And uh, this is not what's Canada, but we believe it's a heaven. And uh, we believe everybody has the right to determine, to decide what he wants from this life. You want to be gay, lesbian, whatever you want, by all means do it. You want to be straight, by all means do it. But don't force your ideology into my life. I, will, I won't force mine into yours. And the sad reality is they are poisoning our kids' minds. Yes. Well, and I remember that case. That was horrific. And and you know what? We're seeing so, so much of that. Um, it's just... It's just getting more and more serious with our children in the education system. And I know that for many years, um, I've been trying to alert parents to the, this kind of stuff. I met you in Calgary. I happened to be out there for a series of speaking engagements. And I arrived on the Wednesday night and looked at an email and said, there was a protest that the Muslims, you're Muslim, I'm a Christian, and uh, the Muslim People were protesting the LGBTQIA indoctrination in the education system. And I didn't have a speaking engagement Friday night. And I looked at my husband and I said, guess where we're going to be? And he looked at me, I know we're going. And I got to meet you there. In fact, you were one of the first pe people I met when I walked up. And I just want to uh, say that you have such a genuine um, compassion and I really felt really connected to you the minute we met. The other thing I want to say is that you were incredibly welcoming. I, you didn't know me from Adam, you know, you didn't know me at all. And I just kind of told you a little bit of what I do. And then you said, will you speak? I was just literally blown away because most people don't want to hear what I have to say because it challenges them to do something. Now, I think that tide's changing, uh, and you're helping change it. Honestly, I am so excited that um, that you have really, I see you as really starting a huge movement. And I know there's others, but, you know, passionate moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, we love our children. Let's, let's talk for a minute about... Uh, the Million Person March. How, how did that get inspired? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. The One Million March, I'm like you. The same thing like when God brought you to to Calgary from Eastern Canada to Western Canada. I think goes a mysterious way when God gets involved. Neither you and I have say in it. So you came here, you attended our protest. All I know, you're a doctor, you're professional, and you made that power of speak when I talk to you, like my heart open because you're speaking from your heart too. And we believe whatever comes from the heart gets to the heart. So like as a concerned parent, and uh, when you told me back in the field what you learned and this experience you have and stuff, I felt like, you know, uh, there's an obligation here for for you to deliver a message. The same thing happened with me with the One Million March. Uh, we started the protest all, all over and all of a sudden I got that message. And September 20th, there's a big protest will be taken across the country. 
and the Muslim brother who started it with the Christian people from all over in Ottawa. So I reached out to him. As many of you know, Muslim are connected. So like we, 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 we get to know each other right away. It's easy. So, and I uh, talked to Kamil Sheikh. He has uh, people working with him from all faiths and races and whatever. Like, you know, uh, they're all concerned parents, concerned Canadian. And he's fed up with what's going on. And he called for uh, for the one million people march in uh, September. And we talked and I said, yes, let's join forces. It's a grassroots movement across the country. And uh, there's many things for us to protest. The main priority, the top line the target for us is how to protect our kids. We all know what's going on in public school. We all know we know what's going on with that, uh, pushing this agenda way, way so much. So the centimeter we're given before, now they're taking a mile, and the mile they're taking, they're taking almost a whole country. So they determined to go into our kids' life to tell them if she, he, or he is she, and all that stuff. And again, live your life the way you want to live, but let us live the way we want to live. And uh, I believe this one million March, whatever's going to be before September 20, completely different than what's after the September 20. And uh, I can tell you one thing. We're not just protesting for our kids. Everybody has many reasons in this country to come and protest, come out and protest in September 20. The lack of freedom, the lack of the choices we have, the financial stress. The list is so long, doctor. I believe it's an obligation every Canadian, every Canadian soul, even some of the people from the LGBT community, because I believe they are victims like us to come out and support parents and their choice on how to raise their kids. That, and that's right. And, you know, one of the things that we maintain, um, and I'm involved with a group called Mama Bears. Uh, we kind of got together in 2018, and a few of us, and, and we are uh, moving full force ahead as well. And one of the things we believe is that every parent needs to be able to raise their children according to their views and values. It Absolutely. doesn't it's not the government's views and values or some other ideology. It's the parents' views and values. The sad thing that I'm seeing now is parents' views and values, even young parents, have been distorted by an indoctrination, by an ideology that has kind of captured them. And that's it's very concerning. And so um, we need to stand up for the most vulnerable, which are our children, and um, I, I mean, I just thank you. There's, um, there's a lot of momentum gaining across Canada. One of the things that um, the One Million March for Children is, is saying is take your children out of school that day. Take them out of school. I mean, I would like to see all children out of the public school system. It is so corrupt. I don't think we can turn it around. Now, I could be mistaken, but... Um, because it's coming down from the top and we won't go to where the really top is, but uh, yeah. certainly the Minister of Education and all of those um, areas across our country have, um, have promoted a curriculum that is changing the brains of our children and sexualizing them and it's been going on for years. And so getting your children out of the public school system altogether is the ultimate goal. Or if there's a possibility to change the system from within, uh, that would take a miracle in my estimation. But uh, nevertheless, here's the thing for parents to understand, at least for one day, at least for one day, September 20th, get your children out of school, bring them with you. It's a peaceful protest. We are not going to promote any kind of, of racism. We're not racist. We're not going to be creating division. We are creating unity across Canada. Canada, this is our land. This is our land. We are Canadian citizens. Once you become a citizen of Canada, you are a Canadian. And so we together, we the people, that's what this is about, isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, I agree with you 100%. In one day, taking your kids out of school, he's not going to miss to become an engineer or a doctor. In fact, he preserves the right for him to determine what he wants. This uh, indoctrination, the sexualities that are taking place in our school, way beyond limit. 
and uh, I'm not going to be shy about it. Some of those teacher or some of the teacher association, most of them been run by uh, people from the multicolored group. And uh, the problem is not just Sogi 1, 2, 3. Sogi 1, 3, it's a problem in the first place, but the amount they're pushing after. So when the teacher goes to school, where they're going like way beyond the curriculum or the uh, program, and like you go to, 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 to kids' class or kids' school, you see almost 84 flagged or signed about promoting LGBT year around in school when literally you don't have a Canadian flag. Yeah. So how could you teach my son to be patriotic? I don't want my son just to learn about accepting inclusivity or how to learn about other sexual identity. It's not his it's not his destiny now. It's not his job. Like he's at a young age. We need to teach him many things other than sexuality and stuff like this. And sad reality is they only see the the, the the advantage of teaching or they're saying education. Education has not never been only about sexual stuff. And now they're making it this way. And uh, like you said early, uh, mama's bear or whatever you call it, I literally encourage everyone out there to be a bear when it comes to his yes. son or to his daughter. Uh, there's things that are taking place behind the closed door in the schools. Neither one of us could know. Most of these people are pro-abortion. They don't believe in the right of life in the first place. That's they want to kill their kids, or they have killed their kids back in the days. Now, all of a sudden, they see the necessity of having continuous, and they're trying to inject their ideas into our kids' life. I'm the parent who decide, and I want to bring those kids to life between my wife and I. No one should walk into our life and tell us what to do and how to raise our kids or what to do with our kids. It's our choice to raise our kids the way we see it fit till they are legally responsible, till they are legally able to determine what's right, what's wrong, when a kid cannot have a tattoo less than 12 years old or cannot watch a horror movie, for God's sake. You know, I can't let my son watch a horror movie. It doesn't matter how strong he thinks he is. How can I go let him watch some stuff and learn about some, about some stuff? My wife and I, we won't even discuss it in front of our kids. So, and I believe pedophilia camouflage cover to they're using to get into our kids' life. They call it some of them under LGBT, not all LGBT. Some of the LGBT people are victim and they are the biggest victim in this situation because they're ignorance and they're some of them they know the truth. They don't want to come out and talk about it and they don't want to admit it. And they know there's issue among their community. And the sad reality is they are willing to silence themselves and take our kids as a hostage or uh uh, into the situation and we cannot let this happen to our kids no and we were um we're talking about our views and values as parents and raising them and you know my our views and values actually are very similar grounded in in a moral ethic um and so for me a biblical sexuality is how i raise my children and yet my grandchildren are now in um, in an educational system that wants to tear all of that away. And for you, you have a grounded a theology that you believe in that is one man, one woman. Um, this doesn't mean we hate other people. It means that we choose to believe this is true and not what secular society determines is truth. And I think that makes a big difference in our lives. It makes, you know, in Canada, uh, Canada was founded in a Judeo-Christian perspective, which meant that everyone could come and practice their own particular religion, but here's here's the moral basis that we believe that doesn't exclude anyone it just means this is what we believe to be true about life and humanity and dignity of human beings and i think that makes a huge difference in how we perceive people how we choose to love people and then we set limits as well i mean there are limits in how we behave because we believe in a holy scripture. Absolutely. You know, doctor, I can't believe uh, sometimes when I talk to people about this uh, situation, we're even discussing it. 
that's a fundamental right for us and how to raise our kids. In fact, even if they're not my kids, any normal human being with a functional brain, he should not accept what's going on to our kids in a public school or in the education system. Sadly, some people with no principle. You said something about Christian. You bring Christian, Jewish, Sikh, mm -hmm. Muslims, any people as a principle, they will stand with us silently without even question right away they know we are in the right path but you have people with no principle they are willing to do anything either for political gain or some personal advantage or businesses and stuff and they will do whatever it takes from their side to get uh what they want and to be successful with what they want and the things they don't understand parents won't let their kids go that easy to be a victim or a prey of any predator or hyena out there and, you know, I'm not going to say, like, I, I just going to say something. Even among the straight community, we have so many predators, pedophile and stuff. What makes the LGBT people are so special enough to claim they don't have any and they're all peaceful, loving people? No, they're not. Biggest example, look at the United States. Those gay couple, they raped and they sold for sexual pleasure their own kids, the adopted kids. Two of them, and many stories like this. And we're not saying this could happen, could not happen to a straight people, could happen to anyone. But who could accept the fact we set up one kid as a target or a victim for some sick-minded ill person out there? And there is many of them. And this has taken place in our country. We hide in it for so long. We know what happened before. How not everything government brings to the surface that's been good and healthy. That's why we changed laws. That's why we changed rules. And uh, teachers, they're not angels. Some of them are good. Some of them are the worst the human being ever are on earth. And, you know, if the, if the churches back in the days raped kids, some men committed sexual relation with the word kids. So LGBT people are no better. They're a human and they could fall for this. But we cannot allow this cover for a big giant male to walk into my daughter's washroom right. and vice versa. This is sickening, you know. That's right. We have paved the way for pedophilia um, to capture the minds of our children in a very seductive way. And we paved the way for sexualization for the last 70 years. So what you're saying is absolute truth because it's, it includes heterosexuals and homosexuals. So every, you know, every person has the ability to do evil. It's Absolutely. what they choose to do evil or not. And um, that the whole issue of born that way, that, that has just been, it's, it's there isn't even an issue even the lgbt people say stop using that because it's not right and i want to say this other thing uh, too that i really it really frustrates me but i even hear people i know and love saying well love is love no not all love is equal not all love and not everything done in the name of love is good and edifying and healthy for the individuals themselves and certainly for the children. So we definitely need to stand together and link arms. And that's what we're doing today. We're linking arms. We linked arms. Uh, absolutely. Uh, he knows that I, I, I laugh when they tell me love, love. The way you love your sister, the way you love your mom, the way you love your brother, the way you love your loving person, husband and stuff is different way of loving another person. So like you cannot love your husband the same way you love your dad. You cannot. And the best, best level of love, when you sacrifice what you have for the person you love. So it doesn't mean if I love, uh, let's say like, let's be honest about it. <clears throat> Some parent, I don't care who they are. And let's say their son or their daughter turned out to be homosexual. Regardless of the amount they are supporting her and the way they understand her. Deep down their heart, they're crying blood instead of tear because they're not happy about that decision. Yeah. And if that daughter or that son loves her parent, it's okay. I'm not saying stay in closet or whatever that terminology they keep using and popping out, out of the kid's mind. And that if she really loves her parent, the least you could do not to hurt their feeling. We grew up, up we grew up in a nature like I'm like 50 plus years old. I remember. I used to care about my dad getting upset. If he sleep in the daytime, we don't want to make noise because he's sleeping will be like a silence in our house. That's how much we used to care about our family and stuff. Now you see someone 
coming to his dad in Islam and his face, whatever challenge he has, and he doesn't care how his foul or dad feels or his mom feels. That's right. And this is not what love is about. Now we're losing the human things that differentiate us from animals. Now we're becoming animals, everybody for himself, everybody for herself. She's about what to feel pleasure with, what she wants out of this life. And she doesn't give a damn or he doesn't give a damn what others feel about it. And this is the highest level of selfishness. Yes. And I call it, we are living in Apple store, everything about I, from iPhone and you go I iPad, i iTV, everything about I. It's not about I. Society about we gathering together, building together, working together. And sometimes, yes, sometimes there's a hard thing you might need to, to take or to sacrifice for the person you love, for the person you want to be, and for the others surrounding you. Because you cannot be like just the infecting apple that hurt everybody. If like my son, a drug addict, let's consider it. I will support him. I'll stand by him and I will cry to get him out of it. Am I happy about it? Absolutely no. I'm not going to say the same thing about homosexuality, but if my son, my son or my daughter determines they want to go that way, the whole family is going to have issue. And I don't care what Trudeau trying to justify it or any politician in this country trying to sugarcoat it. There is a problem. There's a lot of people facing challenges. And the sad, sad, sad story that man, there's not many support. There's not many data out there to document right. what's going on. They all hide it under the carpet. And they only show us the nice, the bright side of the colorful group. Look how beautiful they are. But nobody want to tell us what's going on. They never talk. They Like in Alberta, they talked about forced two couple gay marriage. They got married. They made a huge deal about it. They didn't even stand for a year. They got divorced. The same media who was... Promoting them, they never even talk about the divorce. The same two who got married didn't even stand together for one year while they were talking all the media. That's that's, that's it. They're going to live happily ever after. They're done. That's the highest thing they got. 2005, literally, they didn't even finish 2006. They're separated, fighting in court, and I'm not sure what happened as of today. So, again, they are human like us, but the problem, we're giving them a camouflage cover to get to our kids, to legalize pedophilia, and to let them get to our use and doing the wrong thing and all under the banner of uh, freedom, inclusivity, and whatever you call it, this is this is must stop, especially when it comes to our kids. Because if you're 18, you could determine what you want from this life. Below 18, you should be left alone till you decide and to see what's right, right, what's wrong, wrong. By all means, have at it after that. Well, what you're talking about, Mohammed, is this um, deconstruction of the family that's been happening for decades, but it's on steroids now. And, and every type of sexual experience and expression is now supposed to be treated equally and is equally good. And you and I know that that is not true. Number one, let me tell you, the risks um, with homosexuality are elevated astronomically. And of course they will say, well, that's because of minority stress. No, let's talk about disease. Let's talk about AIDS, uh, which is going up, up, up with young men between 13 and 24. There is an explosion of AIDS with male men having sex with men, young men having sex with men, an explosion. Syphilis, which was almost eradicated, is now just exploding. And it's exploding among homosexual men, bisexual. And and we, you know, all of that is 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 not spoken of because we can't talk about the realities. We live in a culture that is denying the realities of life for these people, and we're harming them. That's abusive when you don't tell people that this could be an outcome of your behavior. We don't warn them. And, it, and that breaks my heart. I had a son. I have a son who spent 11 years in the LGBTQ community. He left it. And he's now married to a woman with and has four children. But he was there for 11 years. And he was there. And he talks about it in my book, Damaged by the Predators Among Us, because my first husband was a predator. And, and so... Out of all of that experience of, of being uh, abused, and I'll call it rape, um, then my son said, I know why I went that way. 
because that was the only way I knew how to love because that's what my father did to me. And, you know, we need to expose what's going on out there and we need to help these people. It's not about hatred. It's about love. When you love, when you love someone, you tell them the truth. That's loving and kind. Absolutely. I'd agree with you 100%. The best way of showing love and tell the truth the way it is. That's you right. know, like, you know, like you cannot come to someone, sugarcoat him when you know he's doing wrong, or at least what you think he's doing wrong. Tell him your idea. Tell him what you're doing. I think it's not right. And let him to see it from a different corner. Maybe he'll agree with you. Or maybe when he presents his idea, you'll agree with him. And uh, if this happened with your husband and you're a doctor, and I, I know when we talk, you have much credit. You're a very passionate lady, sincere mom. I'm so sorry to hear this happen to you, but like I said, in our Muslim faith, we believe God tests everyone according to his capability, capability of handling that stress and the challenge. I'm pretty sure God stood with you and support you in this battle. And uh, shame on your husband doing such a thing. And I'm so sorry that to hear that your son was uh, one of the life victims of what happened. And But, you know, we should learn of that lesson. Yeah. How many people are out there when a father decide to determine or take a stand and do this to his own kid what stopping another ex person doing this to someone else's kids yeah well you know? what? and we know that pedophiles don't stop until even even after they're caught if they get released from jail they will go back and reoffend almost a hundred percent absolutely and, so, and most pedophiles have have uh, assaulted, sexually assaulted dozens of children before they ever get caught. So this is an issue. I don't care if it's heterosexual or homosexual, but uh, we need to look at the, some of the stats within the LGBTQ community with regard to pedophilia. And in Canada, we aren't allowed to, to really expose any of that because that would not be inclusivity. And instead, of, we want to push that all under by our political affiliations and ideologies so that um, no one would be offended. Well, I'm telling you, children are being offended. Children are being wounded. Children are being, um, they're just lives turned upside down. I talked to a young man yesterday uh, whose two children had been sexually assaulted. Breaks oh. my heart, breaks my heart. That's And for me, um, as a therapist, I treated um, adult survivors of child sexual abuse for 25 years. Uh, I mean, this is my passion. This is my heart to see this kind of behavior eradicated and it's not being eradicated. It's being, uh, it's being endorsed and it's exploding across our country. Doctor, I might come across this harsh. Back in the days we learned histories that took a place from priest, uh, even from religious leader, yes. Muslim. And these supposedly to be the man of God, and they did what they could to get to our kids or the orphanage people they were dealing with. What would stop a straight, normal, straight person, heterosexual or homosexual from doing this to our other kids? There's no, there's no punishment. There's no accountability here. Nobody's looking at it. And uh, I agree with you, the politicians are playing weasel game, but the biggest, biggest uh, spreader or bitter, biggest uh, sick uh, people are out there, those NGOs. I call them the communists. I call them socialists. They are. They wanted people to have issue so they could exist, they, to have their existence as a reason for their existence. They are trying to promote all those kind of things. Like I'm Lebanese, like I told you, they sent, I uh, was talking, I used to deal with some of those NGOs, and suppose their job to be for aid and assist people when they're in need. Now, all of a sudden, they got involved into education and about socialists and stuff, sending those books, trying to teach people about, especially kids, you could have two moms, you could have two dads. It's your body. Determine what you want to do with it. It's a, we don't teach kids their separate place of your body. Nobody should That's be exposed, right. to, exposed to no one. You shouldn't kiss this. You shouldn't do that. And they try to teach the kids, oh, you could be open, no big deal. And the predators or those pedophiles, when their victims are all below the age of 
like 15 or whatever young because they know they won't talk. They're scared. They either buy them out with some toy or some candy or some way of intimidating them. And that's why they choose those kids. Not because they're crazy, because they love kids, maybe, but they have their way. A lot of those kids, they won't talk till after the fact, till way too late. So like when you're thirsty, when you go to drink the water, already too late. That's me because you're thirsty, your body in need of the water. And that's what happened when we know about X person, he's a sexual abuser or he's a pedophile or he raped that kid, already too late. It's been going on for a long, long time. And those uh, social NGOs, majority of them, trying to implement these ideas, trying to poison the society and to prove themselves as they are the savior of society, the existence of these people. And then they are willing to do anything and they put themselves in a better place than a parent who brought those kids to life sometime. And this is getting way out of control. And uh, I ha we have to stand together the same way God brought you from Eastern Canada to Calgary to meet. So now we're talking. We would believe in a million years, a Christian lady, doctor, educated, talking to a person, Muslim, from Western Canada. We would never believe this. And thank God we build the bridges. The amount of unity in the march for Canada, one million march is going to be big. I hope politicians will work on that, but I believe they are weasel, they are devils. They want to live in the fraction and the division we have in our society, in our community, from like Eastern to Western Canadian, Muslim to non-Muslim, far right, whatever those terms they use. And now the last term we heard, vaccinated and unvaccinated. One lady died in Alberta because they wouldn't allow a transplant organ because she wasn't vaccinated. What kind of criminal is that? And it did take place in Canada. In Canada in 2023, took a place in Canada. A lady died waiting on the waiting list for a transplant organ and the government wouldn't do it because she'd never been vaccinated. You know, and this is discrimination. This is division among the society. And I believe all those people with no principle, let me allow, allow me to say, I believe the radical left, those people who doesn't praise any principle in their life, they have no banners. They will wouldn't to cross any line to put your their ideologies or objective before any of us. Uh, they are willing to do anything to destroy our society. And the main, main attack they have now and the principle of having families value and mother and a father raising kids in a normal situation. This is to them now something they don't want to exist and they want to destroy us. I hope all the family people out there understand this is an, an attack and, that, and, and each and every one of us out there who has kids want to raise them for the sake of this country, for the sake of God, to protect and defend this country. Thank you. You have spoken so well exactly what's on our heart too, what's on our, my heart. And I just, I really appreciate you coming on and talking today with me. I really, um, I applaud everything that you're doing. And, you know, maybe I'll just close by saying, you know, you are so right with uh, people. People have sold their souls. They sold their souls, their integrity, their moral ethic in order to keep their positions in order to, because they've been blackmailed, I'm not denying what's happening, but you know, in order uh, to be financially secure, we've given up the Canadian soul. We've given up so much of the righteousness, the right thinking that we had. And so now we come to a time, we're at a crossroads, mom, and we're going to see what happens we're going to witness what happens on September 20th. And my hope is that we will have 1 million people in Ottawa and then another two or 3 million across the country. That's at least, at least as we come together, we come together for our children, our heart. And so I just wanna thank you one more time. Anything else you would just like to close with, Mohammed? I just want to say thank you as well, Dr. Ann, for having me. God bless you and bless each and every one out there who's standing up for our kids. And because when I say our kids, Christian kids, Muslim kids, Jewish kids, whoever kids is out there, they're all our kids. And I hope we'll be able to get our voice heard by some of these politicians, decision makers, to free our schools from all the ideologies that are taking place. And I really want to applaud the New Brunswick government 
Saskatchewan government. Yes. And I heard the education ministers in Ontario now trying to, to make some statement in regard what happened. So God bless each and everyone out there who cares about our kids and about our country. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much.